So anger, in other words, anger, there's nothing unhealthy about anger. Healthy, I'm not talking about road rage. <laughs> I'm talking about anger, healthy anger. Hang, healthy anger in the animal world, in the human world, is all about maintaining your boundaries. It's just an emotional response to a boundary invasion. And it basically says, get out of my space. Now, in other words, the role of, uh, of, of, of anger is to protect your boundaries. Now, what's the role of the immune system? The role of the immune system is to protect your boundaries against foreign invasion or against malignant transformation from within. It just follows then, there are many, many studies that have shown that suppression of anger is a major predisposition for disease, and this is why. Because when we suppress anger, we're actually suppressing our immune systems because they both serve the same function and because they're united, they're one system, whatever happens in one system will happen naturally in another, in another aspect of that same system. So that's my first book. But the, but the um, point about all this is, is that nobody's born suppressing anger. Have you, seen a, have you ever seen a six months old who doesn't want to eat when you want to feed him? <laughs> Try it if you want to see genuine human anger. <laughs> you know, you'll be worrying the breakfast very quickly. And that's because the kid doesn't want his boundaries invaded and he hasn't suppressed his expression of anger yet. That happens to us later in childhood. But our programs, our brains are programmed in childhood and once they're programmed a certain way, we tend to behave the same way all our lives. So these, uh, so these patterns are laid down very, very early in the process of brain development, which brings me to my next subject and my first book, which is on attention deficit disorder, which, is, which I have myself. And I was diagnosed with it 10 years ago at the age of 50. And, and ADD is, is, is characterized by three major features. Uh, difficulty paying attention when you're not interested in something. When you're not interested in something. A kind of automatic tuning out almost any time. Your mind just goes elsewhere. Secondly, poor impulse control. And thirdly, which is not always there, but sometimes it's there, difficulty sitting still, hyperactivity. In my case, the poor impulse control by, might be demonstrated by the fact that I found out about ADD because I was writing a column for the Global Mail and somebody told me that they had just been diagnosed and I, I didn't know that it existed in adults. So I, 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 but I listened to her story and I said, hey, this is me. And so, now I'm not somebody as a physician who hands out medications easily or quickly to people, but of course, what did I do the very first day that I, uh, I self-diagnosed myself with ADD? I took Ritalin <laughs> in, in a higher than recommended dose. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and I went home and uh, I felt myself uh, suffused with insight and, and presence and love. And uh, my, wife, my, wife's, uh, my wife thought I looked weird. In fact, uh, <laughs> she says, uh, you look stoned. <laughs> well, within a couple of weeks of having been diagnosed with ADD, I knew that the conventional view of ADD was dead wrong. Because the conventional medical view of ADD is that since it's a physiological condition of the brain, it therefore has to be genetic. But I knew, something in me knew that it couldn't be genetic. You know, you go from convert to expert in two weeks. And, uh, and it turns out that I was right. And, the, 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 you know, as I modestly tell people, there are two opinions about ADD, mine and everybody else's. And the other 300 books on ADD will all tell you that it's a genetic condition. And one little thing they haven't done is they have never looked at how the human brain develops. So it turns out that the human brain largely develops under the influence of the environment. Why? Because at birth, as human beings, we're the least mature of any mammals compared to the adult of the species. A horse can run on the first day of life. We can't manage that degree of coordination and, 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 um, and uh, neuromuscular uh, adaptiveness until a year and a half of, of age. So we're born with very mature brains, and 90% of our brain development occurs after birth and not before. And three quarters of our size increase in the brain happens after birth and not before. And that's for the very simple reason that as our head got larger, we, because we started to use the hand, the pelvis also started getting narrower because we're walking on two legs. So now you have a large head, narrow pelvis. So nature makes a compromise. If any of you have given birth or been present at one, you know that if anybody was born, with, if, our heads were, if our heads were any larger at birth, nobody would ever get born because the head is already the largest part of the body. So now the head has to come out very immature, and it turns out that modern brain science tells us, modern brain science tells us, I'm not making this up, I didn't know this, but it turns out that the human actually, brain actually develops under the influence of the environment. The circuits that get the right input survive and they develop and they thrive, and the ones that don't, they don't survive and thrive. And if you take a child with perfectly good eyes at birth, 
good genes, good optic nerve, but you put him in a dark room for five years, he'd be blind thereafter for the rest of his life because the critical period for the development of brain circuitry of vision is over by age five. And it turns out that the, the circuitry of attention and impulse control also needs the right kind of uh, environmental input. I'm talking about the physiological development, and I'll say more about that later. Uh, but the right condition for the development of the circuitry of attention and impulse control is uh, the presence of a non-stressed, emotionally present, consistently available mothering caregiver. So that the necessary condition for the circuitry to develop for impulse control, emotional self-regulation, and attention is the presence, the consistent presence, of an emotionally available, non-stressed mother and caregiver. And the reason we're seeing so much ADD now, I think, in our society and other childhood conditions as well, is not because of any genetic uh, explosion of anything, but simply because the circumstances for parenting that used to support non-stressed, connected, attachment-based parenting are simply rapidly being undermined by the kind of economy. <laughs>